Is this TED Talk? Check, check. This? I know, right? Uh, this is Bandcamp Talk. Bandcamp. How you feeling? Good, man. You're pulling a, a double duty. Yeah. So, um, what is the first project's name? Sun King. Sun King. Okay. Yeah. That's dope. Like, what? If I'm, a, I'm Thomas Pridgen. I'm sorry. <laughs> I play drums. I'm from the Bay. But um, I played all over the world. Um, he's asked me to come and interview him, which was crazy. Cause give it up for Thomas Pridgen, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just he just he asked me to interview him, and I've never had anyone ask me to interview them, even though like I love Nardwar, but I wasn't gonna. <laughs> you should make this more like Nardwar. Right. I wasn't gonna go ask your auntie anything. Right. Um. Yeah, see, from from my point of view, watching you play, it was crazy how you play totally different with both groups. Yeah. Can you um, talk about, like, your approach? I noticed that you changed cymbals mm -hmm. uh, for the first thing. You had, like, a drier kind of sound going on. But can you talk about your approach with um, High Pulp mm -hmm. and then um, the Sun first King. project? Yeah, yeah, Sun King. The differences. Yeah, I think that... The the Sun King stuff, I think a lot more like I'm trying to be a drum machine. You know what I mean? Like it's like more inspired by electronic music and whereas like high pulp is inspired by like jazz and jazz fusion and like some more high octane type stuff. So I like the open yeah, I think I think a lot more about the high pulp stuff as let's go deep and explore, whereas the Sun King stuff is like how can I really like intentionally compose? You know what I mean? And then the sounds will sort of change naturally, like having the drier sounds with the Sun King stuff allows me to treat it a little bit more like a drum machine or something. You know what I mean? I noticed that um, my man on keyboards also plays totally different. Tuan, yeah. Tuan. Yeah. So, he's got all the cables. And yeah, he's over here, <laughs> mad scientist. Yeah. But yeah, he totally approaches it totally different also. It's, it's crazy because I, I don't usually, um, I'm not so like, so, so like intuitive when I'm watching people play, but watching you play with two and knowing I had an interview, yeah. but also watching you play was kind of, was strange because it was, it was, you were playing two different ways. Um, I wanted to ask you like, what is your, you guys process in like writing music for High Pulp? Yeah, it's, well this whole record like, so, we did this record called Pursuit of Ends, and I sent it, and you listened to it, and I've been trying to talk to you about it all night, and you keep on telling me not to talk until now, so now I'm gonna get to tell you the story. Uh, yeah, we did the whole thing during COVID, and you know, we, we were on tour, and then we were in like Sacramento, gonna do South By and the whole thing, and uh, had to turn around just like everybody else did, so we were like, okay, if we're gonna, you know, start, you know, keep the momentum going, we're gonna have to like, just write, you know, because we can't be together. So we started writing, and it was for the first time that we s we were writing, but we weren't in the same room. You know what I mean? Because I feel like when you're in the same room, you like you're limited by your ability to play something or not to play something or to think of that thing like in that moment. You know, writing as a band. So for for this whole new record, the entire thing was like a really slow process. You know what I mean? Like. We've been talking about like gardening today. You know what I mean? It felt like that where it's like, okay, like you, you put this thing down and then you got a lot of time to like sit with it and see if you really like it. So I would start with the drums and put it in a Dropbox and then somebody else would go over it, you know, via whatever and put it in the Dropbox and then we'd all just start compiling like that. Like in sort of a way, like we think about it a lot like we're just like a, a beat maker, you know what I mean? But with like six different heads you know so yeah it's cool because like all the other bands that that I've played in and, and probably a lot of the people in the band have played in right in the room you know what I mean so it's like from a composition thing we've seen you know for this next record and the one after that what it's like to write apart from each other and it led us down some other places because like there'd be stuff like I just couldn't play but I was like, I'm gonna learn how to play it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm gonna teach myself how to play it so that I can do that. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if we were trying to do it in the room. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, it sounds like you guys turn into quarantine musicians that know each other, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's funny, because like, a lot of guys, since um, this whole quarantine lockdown thing has turned into like working with through emails, you know what I mean, yeah. like sending files. Yeah. Is there like a process? Do you is there someone that you send it to first? Do you send it to like mm -mm. keys? Nah, or we just put it in first? the Dropbox and just whoever wants it. You know what I mean? Like, and I feel like that's sort of like the mentality of of the band of High Pulp is just like spontaneous. You know what I mean? Like, so who's faster no rules. at sending it back? A lot of the time, Tuan. <laughs> <laughs> Tuan got a lot of, a lot of the the starts. But the thing is, is like even at the end of like you know, recording everything, like, I don't know, like, it's it's still, the song's still, like, really flexible throughout that process, even once somebody lays something down, it's still, like, a conversation, you know what I mean? So, it's, like, this record, like, I don't know, at the end of the record, Rob, the other keys player, like, went through, and he actually, like, charted it all out, and he'd be, like, okay, like, thinking about, like, how how this chord is gonna interact with that like horn you know background or whatever and be like oh let's change the trombone just like a semitone you know what I mean because okay that see what that's like we'll a b it and everything and so like the whole thing was just like alive like the whole time you know what I mean so even though like you know sometimes somebody goes first it was like every single time somebody you know added it it was like another flavor in the pot, you know what I mean, that you could actually taste, you know what I mean? So I know you guys are from Seattle. Does um, the city of Seattle have, like, any kind of, like, you know, influence over your plan and your guys' music? I've, I'm like, I remember, like, obviously, like, the, the grunge era yeah. and, like, some of the bands, like, you know, Fall of Troy mm -hmm. and certain, like, progressive metal Fall bands Troy. and, like... Um, you know, just like all the grunge bands, right? Yeah. You guys come across and have a different sound than I feel like I've heard anyone Seattle. come out of Seattle. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But do you feel like the city and its energy has, like, inspired your music? And, yeah. And if it has, what way has yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. I feel like somebody asked asked me that the other day, and I was like, yeah, like, we, we are a Seattle band. We rep Seattle. Like, we feel like Seattle is in our blood. You know what I mean? And even though we don't, like... I don't know, sound like Nirvana or whatever, like all of those, and there's obviously so much more than that, than the grunge stuff, but I don't know, the, like we always talk about ourselves like internally, we're just like, yeah, we just feel like it's like a punk band or something, you know what I mean? Like we don't feel like a jazz band, you know? A lot of us grew up playing in like DIY bands and just like playing all different kinds of music, you know? Um, so, so I feel like, I don't know, in that way, like, that that feels like what what Seattle is, you know what I mean? And and there's also like so much inspiring stuff. Like we were talking about Shabazz Palaces, you know what I mean? And um, just like the whole Black Constellation stuff, super dope. And you know, like Seattle's got more sounds now. You know what I mean? It's like people are always like, oh yeah, Nirvana, huh? It's like yeah, you know, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I feel like. You know, we, we represent Seattle, like, proudly, and we know that, like, we're a different angle on it. You know what I mean? And that's that's special to us, because that's what we're trying to do. You know what I mean? Okay. I know you guys are about to, like, embark on a tour that... How long, how long was you guys tour? Uh, six weeks. Six weeks. Okay. And it's seven <laughs> of you guys. Jesus Christ. Eight, nine <laughs> with the <laughs> tour manager. So, why do this <laughs> you sound like my parents you know what nah, i mean <laughs> it's just a serious question like no 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 because you know you have a lot of bands that are are really amazing are in their own city yeah um, they rep wherever they from but they don't choose to get in a van yeah and make it count and sell yeah. merch and like try to develop a fan base yeah i know you guys have like a record label that yeah. you guys got signed to but yeah. why like, what made you have the heart to be like, you know what, we're going to take this outside of Seattle? We're Why? just trying to do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I don't know, we don't, sort of feels like, at least in my life, and I feel like a lot of a lot of our lives, we talk about, like, I don't know, the, the point of no return is sort of past. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, we're out here, you know, like, we're trying to, trying to just do it, and that's what you got to do. You know what I mean? And it's been cool having all the support, you know, honestly, from 
you know, stuff like Bandcamp or Anti or, you know, our booking agents, whatever. So that's cool because as we keep doing our thing, we just see that, you know, people are responding to it because I feel like that energy of being like, we're doing this because we need to do this. You know what I mean? We're not doing this like, we're doing it because it's fun and we love it, but it's also like some more than that. You know what I mean? It's just like, you sort of have to do it. So uh, I, f I feel like that's that's been cool is like, Everywhere we go, people are connecting with it. And I think it's because of that thing. You know what I mean? Well, thank you guys for letting me interview. I could still ask questions, but I don't know. I mean, Jesus Christ, that was a lot. <laughs> Is there any, um, like, okay, so on some drum level stuff. Yeah. What drummers are you, like, 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 you know, okay, sometimes you can hear people's influences by how they sound. Mm -hmm. Like, when I hear you, I don't, I can't really tell who you're influenced by. So, like, can cool. you talk about a few of the guys that you, like, really, like, like, maybe grew up on or, like, mm -hmm. were a super fanboy of? Not yeah. just, like, I like them, but, like, yeah. a fanboy. Yeah, yeah, person. yeah, yeah. Well, I, I hit you up for a reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, yeah, uh, definitely cats like you. Um... You know, Justin Brown, like, um, you know, obviously, like, like I didn't get into jazz and, and stuff until I was a little older. But then when I found Elvin, you know what I mean? Like, that was a whole thing. And Tony, too, you know? So all those guys, you know, Elvin, Tony, Roy, Jack, you know, Max, whoever, all those jazz guys that you just call by their first name, you know? <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, like, I love Dave King. You know, um, it's just like impossible to put like, you know, it's like, who's your guy, you know? Um, I, I, I just think I'm inspired by, honestly, and even more maybe than like, you know, there's obviously a whole like drum lineage, but also I'm inspired by just like people that are doing their own thing, you know what I mean? And that could be like a chef, you know what I mean? Or that could be like a athlete or whatever, you know what I mean? So I feel like, yeah, like, I, I don't know. I think my whole my whole DNA is like a weird soup with a bunch of different influences, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, it's cool. It's, it just constantly evolves, too, you know what I mean? Something, something like I was listening to. I've been having a whole Max Roach phase again, and it just sounds totally different to me than it did 10 years ago, you know? Um, because things are slowing down, or I'm hearing things differently, and I can appreciate some of like how like compositional he was. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, and just I think the improvised like there's a lot of improvisation in both of these groups, and like people that are really not afraid to improvise is is, is some of my favorite my favorite stuff because that's inspiring. Because you got to be so vulnerable. You know what I mean? So are you running effects with the first band on the left side? Is that like effects going on? Like, cause nah. I was confused because at some points I was hearing like program drums. I'm like trying <laughs> to figure out. Like when I see shows, I'm always trying to figure out who's doing what. Right. Sometimes like the person is not really singing. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sampler and a and a sequencer. So yeah, it's a mixture of like, you know, uh, I'm not doing any effects on the drums. It's just like I'm playing the drums dry. And then I also have some like electronic stuff going on that's like part of the, the whole ecosystem, oh. you know. I thought it was cool, man. I think, yeah. man, yeah, man, it, it was good seeing you guys from like my point of view. It was, cra it was crazy watching like, like you approach like certain like jazz rhythms or jazz ideas with him not playing regular traditional jazz keyboards. That yeah. shit was tripping me out. I was like, are you noticing this? Well, that's and the thing we're trying to do all, you know, like is is we're not trying to like be like, okay, jazz is this thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I might play some jazz stuff or I might play like a samba thing or whatever, but then like instead of hearing the bass played with the kick drum, I want the bass to do something completely crazy. Or I want the synths or you know what I mean? Like we all are a lot more interested in like just going on some something that obviously has like uh, lineage and the roots. You know what I mean? We take like the roots of, of of where the the music that we're inspired by comes from, and then but we're trying to do something completely unique and like just our own with it. You know what I mean? We're just like 
So that's the thing. It's like I might play some swing stuff, and you have some crazy arpeggiator going on. You know. Yeah, it was it was crazy because, and I think that's the I think that's a a dope thing about your band, and it's partially the reason why jazz drives me crazy. Because there's so many like things that are so like traditional, and it's like yeah, it's like a club, and it's like got gatekeepers, and it's not that's right. not the vibe, you know yeah. what I mean? Like that's, and I feel like because I came to jazz late, like I said, I didn't really start playing, like until I was like I don't know, like seventeen maybe, you know what I mean? And like I don't know, I felt like if I hadn't been going to a, like a jazz high school or something, there's there's no room for you, you know what I mean? And it's like. So I feel like that's like close to us because like, you know, we 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 are like sort of like all these outsiders in this way, you know what I mean? And so I get fed up with that too because it's like, man, like, and that's not that's just like counter to the, to the art, you know? Like, you can't go deep if if you have like, you know, gatekeepers and stuff. Yeah, I just think that like I don't know. I think we had this. I think our generation is like a lot better than the generation before us. Yeah. Because um, we're more open to, you know, different things like food or like music. Like, you know, people outside who skateboard or listen to rock, right. they listen to trap. Right. You know what I mean? They well, that's what I thought was dope about <laughs> you was like you were playing with like like a whole bunch of different like genres. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like, OK, like because I don't want to be in the box. We don't want to be in the box. You know what I mean? It's like people that don't want to be in the box is is inspiring. You know what I mean? Well, it's all I mean, honestly, music is just one genre. It's one genre that some dude was just trying to make money. And he was like, you know what? That sounds like techno to me. I'm like, what yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. it's like a gimmick. Because like, yeah. when I watch, I watch, you know, even, I mean, not even watching, but even when you like look at like rhythms like reggae mm -hmm. and like, um, like timbales, you know, mm -hmm. somebody playing timbales is like an Afro-Cuban drum that's whatever. Yeah. You can Google it, right? <laughs> so, yeah, like timbales in the way like people play timbales is a, a lot like how people play a one drop. You can Google that too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it has like a, a similar thing and it's like they're both an island. Yeah. And, you, and when you play these rhythms, you're like, why do they kind of go inside each other? Right. Like, it's right, the same right, thing. Right, right. So, or even drum and bass, you know, mm -hmm. drum and bass, you're like, that's some sped up, like, hip hop. You right, know what right, I mean? right. But they're right, like, no, right. it's drum and bass. And it's right, like, no, right. it's jungle. Right, right. I remember right, it was right, like right. jungle. Do you remember, um, what was it? Trip hop? Do anybody trip remember hop. trip hop? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I never figure out what trip hop was. Well, it's just the boxes, because it's like, it's like easier for people. You know what I mean? Like, and everybody, myself included, it's easier for us to like, just like turn off our brains. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, that's that thing. It's in a box. Cool. Done. I, next. You know I, what I mean? Like, I will that's say That's why people this. are like, you know, trying to do that. Not to cut you off. I will say no. this. I am happy that you did not drop dubstep. That one oh, freaked me out. No, out of nowhere, you just swinging and you just drop dubstep. I'd have been like, "This is so out, y'all." No, 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 <laughs> no. You, you gotta have some. You gotta have some constraints. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's the thing. It's like you know, it's all like it's not. And that's the thing. Like when uh, we were talking with uh, our, our wonderful and talented friend Stas the Boss, and she was saying like. It's a synthesis. It's not fusion, and I, I feel like that's an important distinction for us. Like our band, like we think we don't think about our band like it's a fusion band. Like it's not like you're putting all these like pieces together and just like forcing them in. You know what I mean? It's it's like it's a synthesis. It's like everything is like sort of working intentionally, and I feel like that distinction is like because it's funny. I don't know. I feel like it, it feels more singular that way. Like sometimes fusion feels like. It's just these disjointed things. Or here's a dubstep drop. You know what I mean? Like here's you're in some jazz stuff, and then dubstep. It's like, you know, we're not trying to do like stuff for like shock value. You know what I mean? We're like trying to like just compose and see where, you know, if we don't put limits on where the composition can go, we just see wherever it wants to go. You know what I mean? So hey, I don't know. Maybe we will do a dubstep thing one day. So, but I don't think so. <laughs> so my question is: Did you guys do the whole quarantine jam thing because you had to, or was that like a ch like a? No, we just had to. Okay. Because it was just like you know we we took it all seriously. No one we wanted to hang out with each other. No, we were sick of each other at so that point. So how are you gonna do this in this van for six <laughs> weeks? We're in week one. We're gonna worry Jesus about that later. Christ. <laughs> Yeah, man. I was touring before all this thing, and I wouldn't. People were peeing on each other, and 
Okay. Fucking we don't do that. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. It's not like, yet. Not yet. It's like, yeah, we don't at do this that point, yet. man, you guys are, you guys are going to pack it in. That's yeah. Cool. Man, well, I thank you, man. I don't have hella crazy questions. I appreciate it, man. No, I appreciate it. I want to keep it, I want to keep it PG in here. Yeah, we haven't even really cursed yet. It's I know. good. So is there anything you hella have to do on this tour in any of these cities? You're not going to go to, like, See, if I'm in Seattle, I'm hitting the Space Needle just to look at it. I might not go and eat in there. Space Needle's but is there, lame. Huh? Space Needle's lame. I'm just saying, I'm going to look at it, take yeah. a picture from my Instagram. All right. Is there anything you're going to do, like any drum stores, any places you can't wait to play? Is there any crowds that you guys know are going to be lit? Yeah, Minneapolis. We got a lot of family in Minneapolis. Why Sh Minneapolis? Because I, I went to school out there, and we got a couple members from there. So that's going to be fun. And then Chicago, New York. All this, we, you know, we've never been to the East Coast, so we're just excited to see what it is, you know? And by the time this comes out, it'll be after the tour, and hopefully we'll still be a band. Oh, yeah, you guys are going to be a band. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, man, it's going to be fun, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, man, for including me in your, um, your endeavors. Uh, no I doubt. Appreciate you. No doubt. Clap. Thank you. Clap already. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thanks to Bandcamp, for real. Thanks to Thomas. One more time, give it up for Thomas Bridget. And thank you from the bottom of our hearts, from the bottom of my heart. Really appreciate it. Keep uh, following us on the journey. We appreciate you guys. Go for buy being a, here. a record. Go buy a record back there, right? Yeah, go buy some records. They got music for sure. Go uh, listen to Thomas's crazy drumming on yeah. a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, man. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.